Hello everyone and welcome back to the Chess 24 Legends of Chess Tournament. It's another clash we've been waiting for. Magnus Carlsen takes on the legend himself, uh, Peter Leko. And this is the fourth game of the match. The first three games ended in a draw, even though uh, Leko had uh, his fair, cha uh, fair share of chances uh, in taking down Magnus. Uh, so now Magnus with the white pieces. Uh, whoever wins, wins the match. Uh, otherwise we go into Armageddon. Uh, so Magnus with the white pieces opens with c4 and I would just like to mention uh, Huga released a new song and today is also Judith Polgar's birthday so if you want to check it out it's actually Judith uh, who stars uh, in the video uh, the link will be the first thing you see in the description below so do check it out. Now uh, Leko replies with c5 uh, we have knight to c3 and the knight to c6 so going for the symmetrical English we have e3 and knight to f6 uh, Mag Magnus strikes in the center we have d4 captures captures and d5 now uh, we have knight to f3 and bishop to g4 so fairly symmetrical stuff we have bishop to g5 uh, and now e6. Uh, we have c captures on d5. You want to develop your bishop to d3, but then you have to waste the tempo if black captures here, then you recapture and so on. So uh, white will almost always capture on d5 here. So e captures and the bishop on d3 now. Sorry, not bishop on d3, bishop on e2 now, uh, not allowing uh, th th this pin to exist. Uh, you could go for, uh, to d3. Magnus decides to go for bishop to e2. So we have bishop to e7. Uh, and now comes uh, castles by both players. So, uh, sorry, castles, castles. Uh, and now uh, there is one position in the database where rook to e1 was played. But here we have h3 by Magnus. And it is uh, as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. So bishop back to h5. And now rook to e1. Uh, we have h6 uh, challenging uh, Carlsen's dark square bishop. Bishop to h4. And now rook to c8. And now uh, apologies to, to everyone with uh, OCD. Magnus did not go for rook to c1, but instead he went for knight to e1. He offers a trade of light square bishops here uh, and uh, well asks uh, what what are you what are you planning here? So here bishop captures on e2 by Leko, and you cannot capture with the queen because of this knight captures here. So rook captures on e2, uh, and now g5. Uh, pushing the bishop back you want to gain control of this e4 square without trading off the dark square bishop so bishop to g3 and now bishop to b4 Leko wants to trade here on c3 and then get his knight over to e4 and that will be an excellent outpost for the knight and both players are doing well on time both players are above 10 minutes on the clock here so rook to c1 by magnus uh, and now bishop captures on c3 rook captures and knight to e4 now attacking the rook here and magnus goes rook c to c2 and we get this uh, very weird setup with the queen and the two rooks here not something you will see very often uh, rook to e8 by leko uh, and now uh, magnus goes for knight captures on c6 rook captures uh, and rook captures on c6 we have b captures and just bishop to h2 magnus doesn't want to allow this trade he wants to preserve his dark square bishop as it is uh, controlling uh, a lot of uh, a lot of very important squares here on the board uh, and here is the moment where we reach the position from the thumbnail basically uh, Leko should just do anything other than the move he played so here uh, knight f6 and you offer a rook trade let's say if this happens and you play this end game you are uh, you are very happy here uh, on the other hand you could also try some other queen moves queen d7 queen b6 uh, anything really however rook to e6 by Leko uh, probably comes with the idea of doubling on the e file, but it allows Magnus to completely change the pawn structure and uh, uh, gain some activity. So here Magnus challenges the knight with e3 right away. Now you have to move the knight. You, there are no squares where you can move the knight to defend the rook here. So knight back to d6, and now we have a trade here. Rook captures f captures, and now uh, queen to a4 by Magnus. And here uh, Magnus was up on time some six minutes to four minutes and this comes with a uh, with a th uh, triple threat here the c6 pawn is under attack the a7 pawn and also the knight is under attack here so Leko has to position the queen to uh, deal with all three uh, uh, three threats so here we have uh, queen to d7 now defending everything and now queen b4 putting pressure on the knight and again Leko has to decide what to do here how to save the knight so you could go something like knight f7 knight to f5 or something like uh, knight to, uh, sorry knight to b7 knight to b5 so you have to choose something Leko decides to go for knight to c8 knight to f7 was also a possibility maybe a better one as with this knight to c8 move uh, Magnus goes for the immediate queen to b8 and now it's very hard for black to find the move of course the knight is now pinned 
So king f7 on pinning, but now bishop to e5. And um, it's just very hard. Uh, one of the things, uh, yeah, why Leko went knight to knight here instead of, for example, knight to f7 in that position. For example, if knight to f7, uh, then it's uh, very hard to say where this knight is going afterwards. Uh, these squares are covered, the bishop covers these squares, so the knight will pretty much remain there forever. Uh, so after this queen to b4 move, knight to c8 like we mentioned, and uh, queen to b8. And now Leko has to decide. He unpins here, and now bishop to e5. Uh, king to g8, Leko is now forced to repeat moves back and forth, not like that, but like this. Uh, and just wait to see what Magnus will, will do. And now it's, um, it's either one of those positions where you can improve, 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 improve to the point where you've improved enough to actually convert into a win, or it's one of those positions where black is helpless uh, and you can improve all you want, but you still will not um, gain eno enough improvement to actually convert this into a win. So Magnus starts with b4. Uh, and okay, king f7, Leko repeats moves, and now a4. And the problem for Leko is also that he's very low on the clock. Magnus is 4 minutes 30 seconds and Leko is down to 1 minute. So king e7, and now a5 by Magnus, with king to d8, and now a6. Uh, Leko goes back, king to e8, and now king to h2. Magnus starts bringing the king into the game. King to f7, and now queen to b7. Magnus offers a trade here, of course you cannot trade, because then there's no stopping uh, promotion. So after queen b7, we have king to e8, defending the queen, and now g4 by Magnus. Uh, there's actually a, a very interesting move here that I might even ask you to pause the video and uh, spot, uh, and I will. Uh, feel free to pause the video here and try to find the, the sneakiest possible move that wins for white uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that you have a dark square bishop and those juicy pawns are all placed on dark squares. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, bishop to g7 is, is beautifully winning. Uh, because now there is not much you can do. Of course you cannot capture, the bishop is also defended by the white queen. Uh, and well, those pawns are coming off. If you start pushing them, just bishop f6, you win this one. And then, then you can just trade queens and you have like a 3 to 1 advantage here. It's a, a very straightforward win. Uh, however, Magnus decided to go for a different one. And this just shows how much Magnus understands the end game. Uh, Magnus goes for g4 here. Uh, and we have knight to e7 by Leko. Tries to get the knight into the game somehow. Now that Magnus weakened some squares here, maybe this will be possible. But queen to b8 check right away. And now uh, Leko goes back, knight to c8, and now king to g3. Improving the position of the king even further. King to d8, and now again queen to b7. Now uh, that the knight is unpinned, Leko goes knight to d6. Uh, but now uh, comes... Uh, comes through the idea of, of Carlsen playing g4 and bringing the king over to g3. Now Magnus just trades off everything. And it was interesting, during the live commentary, everyone was like, how do you win this? How do you improve? How do you this and that? Uh, this and that. But Magnus just uh, trades into a king and pawn endgame. Just captures, 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 and captures. So you had all this activity, and you used it to bring your pawn to b4 to constrict black from reaching c5. You have your pass, uh, not a pass, but a pawn all the way to a6. And you have a 3 to 2 advantage here, which Magnus will now use. He plays f4, and now king e7, and now comes h4, the only winning move that assures you the creation of a passed pawn, uh, or if black captures, then your king just uh, enters the game. So king f6, and now comes h captures on g5. h captures, f captures, king captures, and now uh, the... Uh, material on the board is equal however magnus has the only winning move again king f3 which allows you to uh, prevent black from reaching opposition the the pawn prevents that so the black king has to move king g6 and now you gain the f4 square for your king king f6 now leko gains the opposition but it is of little worth as magnus can kick him away from there with the g5 so king g6 and now king to e5 and here of course it is completely winning now Leko captured, we have captures, uh, king f4, king d6, we have here captures, captures on d4, and now just b5, and it was in this position after pushing b5 on move 52 that Peter Leko resigned the game, and uh, what a victory for Magnus Carlsen in game 4 of the match, so uh, again, a match is won without even uh, going into Armageddon. So for the third match in a row, Magnus grabs the full three points. And here you resign because your uh, pawns are much faster. For example, if he moves, you're just going to play b6, sacrifice this pawn, and now the a7 pawn queens. 
uh, there is nothing you can do about this. Uh, even if you start pushing, the, the pawns are too slow. Like in anything you do here, uh, the queen guards the d1 square, so it's it, it's not an it, it's not a problem. And if you play something like uh, king to d2 to maybe uh, hide the the king, you know that uh, we we discussed plenty of times which pawns are uh, winning pawns, which pawns are drawing pawns, and this is uh, definitely a winning pawn for the side with the queen. So there there are no issues here. So yeah, after b5, Leko resigns, and then excellent victory for Magnus. So yeah. Uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Do check out Huga's song. The link is in the description below. It features Judith Polgar, so do check it out. It is her birthday. Uh, I would like to thank Bryce Foster, Ross Martin, Michael Pilgard, uh, Adam Nicholas, and Simon Heath for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Legends of Chess on the Chess 24 tournament. Uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day. And if you're watching this immediately, uh, I'm also streaming some chess with uh, Hikaru Levy and Eric Rosen on Twitch, so do check it out if you guys are interested in that. See you soon.